All right, now that I've finished doing my layouts, it's time to rule up the booster board that I'm going to be working on. Uh, this paper has actually been supplied by Marvel. Uh, they usually give their pencil as the, uh, the paper, which comes pre-printed in non-photo blue with all the, uh, the page dimensions and the, uh, the trim lines, which the, basically the, the crop marks where it's going to get cut, uh, what area is safe, safely going to see print. And uh, roughly it's 11 by 17 inches, the boards that we work on and the, uh, the area that we draw within is approximately 10 by 15 inches. So I'm just going here with uh, my 2mm clutch pencil and just ruling in with a set square where the, uh, the panel borders are. Now I'm actually going to ink the first two panels. I'm only going to ink the first two panels because I'm not quite... I haven't drawn in yet um, the last panel where Colossus's head is going to be, so I don't want to uh, rule uh, the panel borders for three and four panels, three and four, where um, and accidentally go where Colossus's head's meant to be in, in the last panel. So um, I'm just going to do these top two panels. Now I'm inking these in with a uh, rotring repeatograph, just a 0.7, and I'm using an elevated ruler and. Uh, Anytime you ink in a, a panel border, it's, um, you need to have an, a, a ruler which isn't flush with the paper, otherwise you're going to get the ink bleeding underneath your ruler and making a mess. So either an elevated ruler or angle the ruler up so it's not flush with the paper. Okay, once I've done that, I move on to transferring my layouts onto the Bristol board now. Now I'm actually working on a uh, piece of Perspex here it's just resting on my drawing board and my drawing lamp. It's basically a poor man's light box. And um, I've drawn the layouts at, at full size basically, so I'm just tracing those off. Now usually if I haven't, um, if I haven't drawn the layouts at full size, or if I need to tweak it so it's slightly bigger or slightly smaller, I uh, usually scan them into my computer I resize them in Photoshop to the, the, the size I want them within the panel and then um, I print them off and then trace them. I, I, I actually prefer tracing the layouts as opposed to um, copying them because um, I find if I copy them I tend to lose the, uh, the dynamics and the, uh, the loose gestural uh, drawing that uh, I get with the with my initial layouts because basically using a, a different um, skill set I guess when you start the more you start concentrating on uh, the anatomy and the perspective and all those sorts of things which are, are bound by sort of rigid set rules things start to um, stiffen up and usually when, you, when you're doing the layouts, it's usually it's more gestural and you get a lot more uh, dynamics in, the, in your drawing. And um, while you sort of bear in mind the, the, the rules of anatomy and perspective and all that sort of stuff, um, you're, more, uh, you're concentrating more on the, um, the dynamics of the, uh, of the layout than uh, the rigid rules. So. Um, I find when I'm transferring them, I tend to stiffen up the figures, and uh, or I might just uh, it might just be something you do slightly wrong, and then you can't quite capture the initial uh, thing you captured in your original layout. So this is why I prefer to trace them off. Okay, now that I've got uh, the layouts roughed in, um, I'm just going in and I'm just tightening up. Uh, my layouts now. I'm still keeping it very loose because I, I know I'm going to be inking this myself so um, I want to leave a bit of the drawing to the inking stage. Uh, there's nothing worse than drawing the same thing over and over again. So uh, I like to leave it a little loose so I've got a little, a little room to draw with the ink rather than just uh, tracing off some lines that I've already drawn. 
course, if I um, if I had another person inking me, I'd be going a lot tighter with the pencils at this at this stage. So. Um, I don't actually have an inker, so obviously I'm keeping it loose. You can probably see on the on the left there, I'm actually uh, referencing uh, a reprint of Giant Size X Men number one, which this panel was. Um, the panel's characters uh, were from, this scene was from. So um, I'm actually, I've just got it there because I'm referencing the costumes basically. Just want to make sure I've got everything uh, correct with the costumes. There's characters like uh, Sunfire and um, Thunderbird I'm not too familiar with. And even the characters that I'm familiar with, I'm drawing their older costumes here, so I um, just want to refresh my, my memory that uh, I'm getting the, the costumes right. Now all this is... Uh just pencil with my two mil clutch pencil. Just a regular HB lead I'm using. I find when I'm uh, penciling myself, I tend to use a, uh, a softer lead. And I tend to use a, a harder, sort of sharper lead when I'm um, penciling for another inker. But anyway, now that I've tightened up all the figures, I've actually moved on to uh, inking the foreground of this um, of this panel. And you probably noticed I didn't actually uh, tighten up any of the um, any of the foliage and the leaves, the vines, and all that stuff in the foreground from the jungle with the pencil. So I'm just, I'm really, I'm just drawing with the ink here over the rough lines that I'd uh, put in in my layout. And I prefer doing that with this sort of stuff because um, all these uh, leaves and foliage and things and all these things that have lots of different textures, I find it's a lot easier to just um, put the textures in with the, with, with the crocodile using a Hunt 102 crow quill here with a crow quill or a brush um, at the inking stage rather than um, doing it with a pencil it's hard to get um, all the different textures and stuff plus it's fun to draw this sort of stuff um, just freehand I like doing a lot of this stuff sort of freehand I've drawn quite a few jungles in my uh, comic career so um, I'm used to drawing all these different textures and basically all I'm doing is um, it's just a matter of creating uh, different textures next to each other and uh, just varying the size of leaves and things like that and you just vary the, uh, the textures next to each other sort of to add variety and sort of separate elements as well so obviously if everything's the same texture it's all sort of going to meld together and then you're going to lose um, some of the, the depth in your drawing so now I've, I've started inking with a um, my Windsor & Newton Series 7 number 2 sable brush you find it's a lot easier to put in uh, larger black areas obviously with a brush than um, than a crow call. The brush is probably the most uh, versatile tool with the inking. You can get simply because of the variety of lines you can get just from the one one tool. 
but uh, it takes a, f a fair bit more. Um, it's it's harder to use, I guess, uh, if you if you first start off inking. It's harder to use a brush than um, than a nib or a pen. I guess with things like repeatographs, it's closer to using a pencil. The way you use it, and the crocodile gives you a bit more flexibility. Um, with with your point, obviously, with the repetograph, you're going to get a um, a flat line, uh, you know, a single sort of line width from it. Um, with the crocodile, you still sort of got that control of the pen, but you've got a bit more flexibility where you can uh, press a bit harder and get a sort of heavier weight in your line. The brush is even more versatile, but it's you sort of got to hold it differently, and and the way you use it, obviously, you can't press down like you can on a um, a pen, and still get sort of fine lines from it. So um, I actually found it really hard to to use a a brush when I first started inking, and then for the longest time, I all I used was the uh, the crow cool. but then I decided to persevere and uh, and use the uh, try and use the brush, and uh, finally, uh, after much much practice, I started getting the lines that I wanted from the brush, and um, I started using it quite a bit. Uh, but now I tend I tend to use all three just depends on what I'm actually uh, drawing on the page. If it's something really small like I'm going to be doing with the figures, I'm, I'm just going to use the repeater graph. If I want something a bit more textural and a bit more line weights, uh, a bit more line weight variation, I'll go to the crocodile. And if I'm doing larger stuff or hair or something which is a bit softer, I use a brush. Or the stuff which is more organic, I tend to use a brush. But here in this panel, stuff is small, so I'm, I'm using a crow cool and the brush sort of for the for the black areas as well. Obviously, I started with the uh, the foreground here because I don't want to. Uh, it's going to be overlapping the characters, so I don't want to draw the characters where. Uh, the foreground should be, so I've started with the foreground first. Now just roughing in my um, the tree line. Now I'm not putting as much texture and stuff obviously in the background because um, obviously I've put that much detail in the background, it's going to um, to flatten the image and I'm going to lose the depth and obviously when things are far away you don't see a lot of detail anyway, so uh, just hinting at a tree line and some uh, couple of trees sort of a bit close in the foreground but still sort of keeping it very open just adding a few more branches in here just to sort of block in stuff and have them all pointing in and drawing attention to uh, the team in the foreground since they're the main focus of the panel 